Yes, it's about that time Samsung has already sent out their invitations for a Galaxy Impact to happen in Paris, and uh, you bet we're going to be there. It's interesting how the company has been shifting the location of its particular Unpack for foldables. While the Galaxy S has happened in California for the past couple of years, foldables went from virtual during the lockdown to a great trip to South Korea last year, and now it's all about Paris. Don't say I didn't call it, as the company has been a sponsor for the Olympics for decades. And given how they're held in Paris this year, and the company has a possible ring launch, yeah, put two and two together. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and it's time for another deep dive, this time on the next Galaxy Unpacked. Let's begin with the obvious thing we totally expect this unpack to be about, which is the Galaxy Ring. Samsung first teased the Ring briefly at the Galaxy S Unpacked in January with zero information. It wasn't until MWC that I was one of the few that uh, got a private briefing to play around with it, and uh, where we learned a bit more information, like that the Ring will come in nine different sizes from 5 to 13, three color options, black, silver, and gold. It's very light, with the heaviest version weighing at only only 2.9 grams, which is less than half the weight of the heaviest Oura ring. Also, the battery size varies uh, with how large or small the ring is, which we later confirmed through the FCC documents, though it's hard to tell how that'll impact consumers. At the time, we were told the Galaxy Ring would introduce a new health system called Vitality Score, which offers personalized health insights, though we've heard separately that that could change or vary. We also hear that Samsung plans to add this feature to the Galaxy Watch, though we don't know if it will support older variants. Now, if you're an iPhone user interested in this ring, well, it seems the Galaxy Ring will only work with Android devices, and we're not even sure if it's only Galaxy devices. The pricing is reportedly $300 or $350 in the United States, similar to the Aura Ring, which costs $300, bucks, but that one requires a subscription. The Galaxy Ring might not need a subscription but this hasn't been confirmed just yet. Now let's switch to the rest of the products we expect at Galaxy Unpacked. Evan Glass uh, shared high quality images of the rest of the wearables just recently with the Galaxy Watch Ultra, Galaxy Watch 7, Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, and Galaxy Buds 3. Now the Galaxy Watch Ultra looks like previous images we've seen, but now we know it will have a special connection with the watch band, similar to the Apple Watch, at least visually. It's an odd choice considering how Samsung has supported standard bands for almost every Every iteration of all of his watches and could make adoption complicated of third-party bands because, well, we don't know if they're going to be treated as much as the Apple Watch depending on sales. The watch's display remains round even though it has a squarish enclosure around it, which I think is pretty genius. The orange accents on the watch are also similar to those of the Apple Watch Ultra. Samsung's version will offer more color options, though we assume titanium will be used like the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. There will be three colors according to the leaks, silver, natural, titanium and black. Now, rumors suggest it will include new sensors for things like temperature and possibly even blood sugar levels without needing to prick your skin, though this might uh, need uh, approval from the FDA. Now, in terms of what's inside, it could come with 32 gigs of storage and a super bright display that reaches 3000 nits. It should be tough too with an IP68 rating and could run on a powerful 3 nanometer Exynos W1000 chip for fast performance. And of course, of course, it'll likely include Samsung's One UI for Wear OS 5, which has proven to work pretty well in previous iterations. Reports also indicate that the upcoming Galaxy Watch Ultra might feature a sizable 578 mAh battery, coupled with uh, some energy efficiency on the new chip. This could also lead to significant improvements in battery life, but of course, we'll have to tell whenever we get units. Now, the standard Galaxy Watch 7 apparently sticks to Samsung's usual design style since, what, four generations? The olive green version looks particularly nice with small colorful accents on the sides of the watch band. Now the Galaxy Watch 7 is set to feature the same 3 nanometer chipset possibly, promising improved performance, efficiency, and smoother operation. While exact battery life data isn't specified, it is anticipated to offer days of use on a single charge. Now FCC certification suggests it'll support faster 15 watt charging up from the current model's 10 watts, ensuring quicker
her recharges. Health monitoring capabilities are reportedly enhanced with an advanced heart rate monitor, blood oxygen detection, stress analysis, sleep quality analysis, and various workout modes, all integrated into Samsung's Bioactive Sensor 2. A notable addition is the inclusion of an AI companion, which will enhance sleep and exercise monitoring and communication through features like Galaxy AI for smart replies. Uh, the specific role of AI in this function is not detailed, but its integration could potentially introduce new features and provide better recommendations for improving health and lifestyle, though we hope it's not Bixby. Now, rumors also suggest that both Galaxy Watch models may introduce sleep apnea detection, leveraging software enhancements rather than new hardware sensors, highlighting Samsung's focus on maximizing existing capabilities through advanced software integration. And for those of you asking, what about the Buds? Well, Blast also shared images of the Galaxy Buds 3 and Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. Both models have a stem design, which is a dramatic departure from every past iteration, and yeah, very similar to somebody else's homework. They are apparently more angular compared to Apple's AirPods, but the overall look is quite similar, especially for the glossy wide Galaxy Buds 3. Now, the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro are more noticeable with their dark gray finish and transparent case lid, and the same stem design. We'll have to wait for Samsung to explain why they made this change, though I am hoping stem controls are included, as the current capacitive ones are terrible when you're running. It might improve voice calls and interactions with AI assistants, as the microphones will be closer to the person's mouth as well, which is totally welcomed. Now, as for the phones, make sure you watch our separate deep dive on the Galaxy Z Flip 6 according to everything we've known so far. We don't necessarily have any substantial changes on the design of the Z Flip 6 from what we've heard, other than a different approach to the paint job, especially in the camera modules. Reportedly, most of the focus is on things you might not notice, but definitely appreciate, like the thicker ultra-thin glass, which means less of a crease and better durability. Changes in the hinge aren't expected though, so we wonder if this means a slightly thicker phone. And as for specs, we hear Snapdragon Agent 3 uh, for North America at least, 8 gigs of RAM and starting at 256 gigs of storage. International variants may be offered the Exodus 2400, similar to the base S24s, though that's a vague rumor, we'll keep you posted. While there have been requests for larger battery capacities and higher storage options, details on these upgrades are scarce, with charging speeds potentially remaining unchanged due to size constraints. What we do here is an anticipated change in a better primary camera, now upgraded to a 50 megapixel module, which could allow for a 2x telephoto. Sadly, no word on improvements to the ultra wide. Reports suggest new color options, including light blue, light green, silver, and yellow on whatever galaxy names they'll have, in addition to the exclusive colors of white, peach, crafted black, and uh, anything else we'll see on samsung.com. Now, when it comes to the Galaxy Fold, recent leaks suggest the next generation of foldables may see incremental changes rather than a radical approach to the form factor. Adjustments in the aspect ratio of the outer display are rumored to enhance user experience, though the overall design will likely remain very familiar. Despite advancements in battery technology, the Galaxy Z Fold 6 may continue to be one of the thickest foldables out there. Samsung's plans to enhance display technology with a brighter and more efficient panel when compared to the OnePlus Open have been teased, but we'll see about that. The hinge mechanism has been a focus of innovation with the Z Fold 6 introducing a three-part hinge for improved durability and the slimmer profile. The Z Fold 6 is expected to refine this design further. Internally, it will share components with the S24 Ultra, sort of, with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, 12 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM, UFS 4.0 storage, and a slightly larger battery. There is speculation about an advanced variant, possibly labeled Q6A, offering a premium build, and then we also have reports mentioning a potential affordable Z Fold variant starting at $800 though details remain speculative, and honestly, I doubt it'll be that cheap. Also, don't expect much when it comes to the cameras, as again, rumors hint to the same 50 megapixel primary along with an ultra wide and a 3x telephoto. Samsung's One UI 6.1.1 is expected to debut on the Z Fold 6, focusing on foldable specific optimizations and possible integration with Samsung's Galaxy AI platform, even if the Z Fold 5 already has been treated to all these updates a couple of weeks or probably months ago, ever since the S24 launched. To conclude, 
let's just say this Galaxy Unpack seems to be more about wearables. A possible new Galaxy Watch Ultra, a new approach to the Buds, and the Galaxy Ring all hint to the company pushing hard at innovating in this space, all while remaining very conservative when it comes to the flip and the fold. And listen, it makes sense. Samsung is still gearing up to a completely new era of design with Huey Lee, though we don't expect any of that until next year, given how early phones are planned. Uh, whatever the case may be, it does seem to be an interesting event, though, yeah, I'm with you in the fact that I really wish there's more when it comes to the foldables. Let us know if you agree with our assessment in the comments down below, and while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me prep for a very interesting unpacked. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.